Hey guys, so what if I told you that this could be played on one guitar like this. So what you just saw was guitarist Jorge Caballero playing the final movement of Dvorak's New World Symphony being played on one guitar, when yes, this piece was clearly meant for full orchestra. Anyway, that video is just an example of an extreme case of what this video is about. So anyway, with that being said, my name is John. Welcome back to another episode of For the Classical Guitarist. If you're new here, I hope that you like what you see, and yeah, let's get started. So as I'm sure you can tell by the title, this video is about pieces that were written for other instruments but are actually pretty common in the classical guitar repertoire nowadays. Now yes, I know there are tons of pieces that were written for other instruments that are also playing guitar. I can't cover them all, so I'm just going to include the ones that I think big name players play. Of course, like always, if I miss something, let me know in the comments because you guys always do. So I'm going to start with a pretty obvious one, and that's going to be lute music. And the biggest one that comes to mind first would be the four lute suites by none other than Johann Sebastian Bach. Now, why this one is first is because I feel like it is kind of cheating because the lute is very, very similar to the guitar. Yes, it has different tunings and it has a different amount of strings and there are different kinds of lute, but at the end of the day, it is still a fretted sort of string instrument that we have. And yeah, it's very similar to the guitar, which is why its music transfers so well over to it. Just so that you can hear an example of that, here is the fourth lute sweep prelude being played on lute. And then following that will be, be the same thing being played on the guitar. Take a listen. So as you can see, they do sound pretty similar, and I guess that's why the transition between one instrument to the next works so well. So the final thing that I want to say about the lute is that even though Bach was, of course, a great composer of his time, he was not the only one writing for the lute, of course. There were lutenists as well as composers such as Leopold Weiss, Robert de Vizet, and of course, our original sad boy, John Dowland. So the next one that I want to talk about is an instrument that I think could work very well on the guitar, and it definitely does. But you don't see that many of the instrument's music being played on the guitar, except for this one composer and this one set of pieces. And if you haven't guessed already, that of course would be the Six Cello Suites by Johann Sebastian Bach. I guess what I find interesting is that you don't really see much other cello music being played on the guitar, at least as far as I know, except for these. And yes, some of these are maybe, in a sense, are overplayed on the guitar, prelude to the first cello suite. But you know, the way that I see it is it kind of just shows how good Bach's music was, that it fit on the guitar so well, even though it wasn't originally written for it, even though Bach probably had no idea what the guitar was going to become, and he still wrote music that would transcend into the guitar repertoire so perfectly. So that's kind of the way I see it. Anyway, here's a video of the third cello suite being played on cello and then being played on the guitar. Now, personally, I think it does sound a bit better on the cello, but that's just me. Maybe I listen to too much guitar. When you compare the cello version to the guitar one, you notice that there are some differences. It's not a direct copy and paste as it might have been when you go from lute to the guitar. And the reason why that is, is because the cello can mostly only play single lines. And yes, I know you can do two notes at once, but it's not really the same as doing two or three or even five or six notes at once on the guitar. So if you listen carefully when you go from cello to the guitar, one thing you might notice is that there's a lot more notes in there. That's because the people that are making these guitar versions of these cello songs are taking them and adding stuff in that they think would make it sound maybe a bit better and maybe even a bit more guitar-like. Now you can argue if you think this is right or wrong. Some guitarists such as Andrew York actually just take the cello part and do it exactly as it is on the page and don't add anything. And some additions done by people such as Michael Lorimer, you might notice a lot more basses than you think you even need. Again, it's all up to opinion because you are making your own arrangement of the piece, but just something I wanted to add. 
so the next category is actually a little bit broader, and that's going to be keyboard and piano music. Now, there's tons of composers that are for keyboard and piano that have been transferred to the guitar, but I'm going to talk about the big popular ones only. And if you guys want to talk about some of the less popular ones, then yeah, go ahead. But the big ones that I think I have to mention would be, of course, Chimarosa, Granados, and of course, Scarlatti. So the reason why I think the keyboard music works better on the guitar as opposed to some of the other instruments is just because it's another polyphonic instrument. And yes, the piano and keyboard instruments have more notes than the guitar, and as a result, you can do more things on them. But you know, sometimes it's easier to simplify than to make things more complex, such as going from cello to the guitar. So that's why I think a lot of them work. Anyway, here's a quick clip of a Scorlai Sonata being played on the harpsichord and then being played on the guitar. And yes, I know I could have picked the piano, but how often do we listen to harpsichord? Let's check it out. I don't think I missed anybody with piano, so let's keep going. Anyway, for the next category, I do want to talk about a little bit of a broader range, but this one a little bit more narrow, and that would be some violin music. And for this, two composers come to mind. First one would be, of course, Johann Sebastian Bach, again, no surprise, but the other one would be the violinist Niccolo Paganini. Now, in looking at how the violin music really fits into the guitar repertoire, the first thing I noticed that's interesting is that most of it is pretty difficult in the guitar repertoire. Now, that being said, I don't think a lot of it is easy in the violin repertoire as well, but I'm not a violinist, so I can't really tell you how difficult it actually is to play on the violin. But what I can tell you is pieces such as the Bach Chacon or his violin partitas, or even some of the Paganini Caprices are insanely difficult to play on the guitar, mostly because they're fast, but also just because they do things that are not that practical to do on the guitar. After all, Paganini did sell his soul to the devil to get his violin skills, so imagine how that transfers over to the guitar. Anyway, just so you can see how difficult some of these pieces sound on the violin and then on the guitar, here is the fifth Paganini Caprice being played on one of each. Anyway, so this last one isn't as common as some of the other pieces I mentioned, but I did want to mention it because it is pretty common. And that would be some of the music done by Astor Piazzolla. For those of you who don't know, Astor Piazzolla was an Argentinian composer, band leader, and bandonian player. He pretty much revolutionized the tango and even made a new style of music that he called Nuevo Tango, which was just new tango. And he wrote music for a variety of settings and combinations. He even wrote some pieces that were actually originally for the classical guitar. The biggest one would be the history of the tango for guitar and flute. But some of them he wrote for a tango quartet, which does not usually have guitar in it. But yet, those have found their way into the classical guitar repertoire as well. The biggest ones that come to mind for me are Oblivion, Verano Porteño, and Vierno Porteño, and of course the Libre Tango as well. Now I don't think that these pieces are recorded as much as some of the other ones that I mentioned in this video, but they are pretty common. So here's a quick example of Verano Porteño being played in a tango quartet and then followed by it being played on one guitar. <laughs> That's all for this video. If you guys liked what you saw, it would mean a great deal to me if you left a like on the video and even left a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like pieces better on the guitar or better maybe in the original setting. And even if I missed something, but I'm pretty sure I got the big ones. Anyway, like I said, if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you like what you saw. And hopefully I'll see you guys in another video. 